In this video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of how the software drives the motion platform. This is an overview of how the software works together. So very briefly, the game must be patched by the SimTools game manager. The plugins can be downloaded from X Simulator for a small fee. To install the plugin, use the SimTools plugin updater located in the root of SimTools installation directory. So with the game plugin installed, when I make a change to the joystick position, it is detected by the game and the aircraft moves. The forces caused by the change are read by the plugin and sent to the SimTools game manager and then onto the SimTools game engine. The magnitude of these forces on the motion platform can be adjusted using the tuning center. The SimTools game engine sends the information serially through the USB port. You can also send the data through the network uh, via the UDP protocol, so it can be read by other software such as the SMC3 utility. The Arduino reads the packets on its USB port and sends the motor commands to the motor driver via its serial link. Once the Arduino has commanded the actuator to move to a set position, it looks for feedback from the position pots to know whether it's reached the desired position or not. In the case of the Sabretooth 2x60, if the Sabretooth doesn't get a motor command within a short period of time, uh, usually in milliseconds, uh, it will turn the motors off. This prevents the motor driver from blindly telling the motors to keep going without any feedback and destroying the actuators. Now that you've got some idea of the overall software suite, I will start with the Arduino Uno and then work backwards towards the simulator software. It's worth noting that I had some trouble with the Arduino Uno clones that I got from eBay. It might have been that I had a bad batch, but one type of clone didn't seem to work. So take a look at these two Uno clones. The one on the left worked while the one on the right didn't. So keep that in mind if you are going to buy clones. Um, I also found that some cables that were once used for printers didn't work either. So in the end, I used a, the short blue cable that came with the Arduino and a USB extension cable. The Arduino is loaded with a sketch or firmware called SMC3, uh, which can be downloaded for free from xsimulator.net. The main functions of the sketch are, firstly, to read the position of the actuator by using a potentiometer which converts the position into voltage, zero to five volts, and the Arduino can handle up to three actuators. Secondly, the software works out the difference between where the actu actuator should be and where it is currently. I won't talk about the PID part of the controller because that deserves a whole video on its own, but very briefly, the algorithm, uh, PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative, uh, is used to determine the fastest, most efficient way for the actuator to reach the desired position without over or under shooting. And thirdly, the Arduino sends commands to the motor driver via a serial link so that the actuator ends up to where it's supposed to be. In addition to these three tasks, the Arduino has the ability to vary the power available to the motor by using a technique known as pulse width modulation. Pulse width modulation has a range of 0 to 255, and this controls the average power available to the motor. So a value of 127 is half power, or in other words, a 50% duty cycle, 50% on and 50% off. As the pulse width modulation value increases, the actuator will have a greater ability to follow the input signal, but may overshoot the set point due to inertia or gravity. And this is where the PID algorithm comes in uh, to minimize this overshoot or undershoot. Uh, I didn't play with the PID settings, but it might be something to do perhaps on a rainy day sometime in the future. There are different versions of the SMC firmware. I used the soft start version because I wanted the Arduino to use serial communications with the Sabertooths. You'll need to edit the code at the top of the sketch to select the mode you'll be using before uploading it. So after uploading the sketch, you'll also need to download the SMC3 utility, also free from xsimulator.net. 
Uh, this software allows you to change the pulse width modulation and PID settings and store them in the Arduino software or firmware. In order for the uh, SMC utility to communicate with the Arduino, you'll need to change the settings in the um, SMC3 utility INI file so it can talk to the right port that the Arduino is connected to. Working with just one actuator initially, set the KP to 400 and the other PID settings at minimum, that is the KI to 0, the KD to 0 and the KS to 1. Set the limits and clipping to 255 uh, and set the step to 10. Click on manual and move the blue dot up slightly. Now increase the PWM value. If the actuator begins to move towards the new position, then the feedback pot is wired correctly. Otherwise, you'll need to swap the zero volts and five volt, volt wires on the pot and try again. Gradually increase the pulse width modulation value while moving the blue dot up and down. I found that once I'd increased the value to more than about 220, the actuator was no longer smooth. Um, as you change values, the SMC 3 utility writes the values to the Arduino where they're permanently stored. Be careful using the test waveforms such as the sine wave uh, with your actuator as it may exceed the uh, maximum travel and cause damage. I couldn't find a way to change the amplitude of the waveform so I simply used the manual control. Uh, once you're satisfied, press M2 to copy the values to the other motor and you might be wondering what PWM rev is for. Um, that's used for by the motor controller once the actuator uh, is reaching or has reached the set limit. It helps you to electrically put a brake on the motor by reversing it. Now this is just a, an introduction really to what the SMC utility can do. It really needs a video all of its own, but uh, that's just to explain how it works and all the functions. As I said in the previous video, you need to power up the Sabertooth first, then the Arduino, so that the Arduino can send the proper initialization, initialization commands to the Sabertooth. You'll now need to download SimTools. Uh, a registration key can be purchased from X Simulator, uh, or if you're building a project and it qualifies, you can request a free key. You'll also need the game plugin you want to use the platform for, which in my case was for X-Plane. And even though it's quite old now, uh, it still works quite, uh, quite well with the latest version of X-Plane 11. I initially set the access limits at 10% for safety. You'll see the actuators move, but they won't drive past the limit switches and cause damage if something goes wrong. Eventually, you'll want to increase this limit slowly and watch where the ball screw goes. Now the goal is to get the percentage value that moves the ball nut between the limit switches but without actually hitting them. It may be as low as 30% or as high as 100%. And after playing around with this for a while, I ended up working with only one force, that is one degree of force at a time, and leaving all the other values blank. So for my flight sim, I started with, a, with pitch, which is called extra two in the X-Plane plugin. Then you'll need to set up the interfaces for the Arduinos. The six actuators um, that I had, I needed to use interface one, two, and three. Um, and to find out which port belongs to which Arduino, I unplugged them all and then opened the Arduino IDE. Uh, I plugged in the Arduino to see which port it uses. And then I updated the SMC3 utility and I updated the um, interface that you can see here. In this image, two motors are expected by the Arduino, which you can see. Uh, if you have two actuators connected to the Arduino, you'll only need to have two set up in this field. Uh, in the image, I have the output rate set at 10 milliseconds, but I later changed this to one millisecond. I created presets for each of the interfaces, so it would be easy to reload them. When SimTools starts, it loads these presets by default. At this point, I was able to check each Arduino and find out which axis was assigned to which Arduino. And uh, I worked out which actuator corresponded with each axis using just the heave force. 
Um, so after setting axis one only to heave and all the others to blank, I watch which actuator moved. I then reset that axis to blank and set axis two to heave and so on and so on. In this way, I was able to work out the numbering system that's shown here. Once I knew which actuator was which, I could set the direction for uh, roll, pitch, heave, and yaw. The orange squares on the axis assignment show which direction the actuator will move. They won't all move in the same direction, except for something though like heave. In theory, the percentages for each axis allocation should add up to 100% by reading across the degrees of freedom columns. I found that I could have a total of more than 100% and it still worked okay. However, you'll need to use the output testing part of SimTools to make sure you put the actuators into every extreme position and test whether they will hit the limit switches. For example, um, maximum forward pitch with negative heave. When using the output testing part of SimTools, it uses the default settings, not the game settings. Well, at least that's what I found. So if you make changes to the axis uh, while you're testing it, make sure that you set those changes in the game profile as well. Uh, move each side slider to make sure no actuator hits a limit switch and try combinations of forces such as pitch, roll, plus heave. And again, the goal is to get the maximum travel from the actuators without hitting the limit switches. The FLT column actually stands for filter. Um, you can use that for, in my case, in X-Plane to smooth out the motion. It helps to get that feeling when you come out of a roll and the aircraft settles back into level flight. So you need to play with these filters once all the access settings are confirmed. Now there's probably millions of combinations of all these settings. So focus only on one degree of force at a time. And as with the SMC utilities, this is just really an introduction to SimTools. It really needs a video all on its own to explain how it works and all the functions. To get SimTools talking with X-Plane, start X-Plane and click on Settings, Data Output. Now that you have the screen with all the checkboxes, check the following items in the last column called Network via UDP. So you'll need to check uh, the boxes that start with number three, which is speeds, number four, which is Mac vertical velocity indicator and G-load, number 16, angular velocities, number 17, pitch, roll and headings, number 38, engine RPM and number sorry, number 37 engine RPM and number 38 propeller RPM. Check the box, send network data output and enter IP address 127.0.0.1 and port 4123. Set the UDP rate to maximum, which is 99.9 .9 packets a second. Click done. And finally, once all this is done, the software is set up and ready for testing and tweaking. I have the SimTools Game Manager and SimTools Game Engine software start when the PC boots up and the Game Manager function monitors which games are running and loads the associated profile. It's worth to, uh, keeping the main level at a very low percentage until you're confident you're not going to damage anything. The main slider acts like a master volume control. However, if you set it at zero, it doesn't cut out all movement, like a volume control uh, cuts out all the sound. It's more subtle than that. It globally lessens the overall movement of the sim, and it's handy if you want to turn down the responsiveness for, say, a very fast acrobatic aircraft. When I put it down to 0%, I was expecting it to behave like an, the overall volume control and reduce all movement to practically nothing. Well, it did tone things down a bit, uh, but it was more subtle than you might expect. Anyway, once things are working, you can start playing with the tuning center, uh, which is like a music graphic equalizer, if you like, uh, where you can change the levels of motion coming from the simulator and how they're sent to the platform. It's worth spending some time with the tuning center as it can uh, change the behavior of a platform from simply moving one about to one that really makes you feel like you are there. 
Well, I hope you found that useful as an overview for the software needed to drive the motion platform. I'll follow it with some more videos on how to set up the SMC3 software uh, and the software utility and also SimTools.